इसको ना अमृतांचन ब्रिज इसलिए बोलते हैं कि ये सबका हेडेक वाला ब्रिज है सही में हेडेक वाला है Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village, and I am Radha Krishnan. Well, I am sure you are going to really enjoy this video because in this video, for the first time in Pixel Village, we have a celebrity photographer. In fact, he is one of the most celebrated celebrity photographer of India, the one and only Dabu Ratnani. As you know, uh, Dabu is a Godox ambassador and on that particular day, Dabu was doing a video especially for uh, Godox. In fact, Godox was producing it and we kind of, you know, went in between uh, to create a small vlog of sorts for Pixel Village. And of course, Dabu came in on time and, uh, you know, I went in first to kind of brief Dabu as to what we were expecting to do in between his day's shoot. So now I'm going to go and talk to today's celebrity uh, whom Debo is going to work with. Okay, Sonia Bansal. She's an amazing creator, an artist, dancer. I mean, with 5.2 million followers on Insta. Let's go meet her. Good morning. Uh, hey, camera, give me a camera. Oh, hello, guys. Hello. <laughs> okay. Acha, Dabu, ke saath aap, uh, yeah. pehli baar shoot kar rahe ho? Yes, I'm doing first time, but we uh, are ka plan chal raha hai already. Acha. We shoot karne wale hai. Aur, uh, definitely, you have heard about Dabu. Ke suna hoga is yes, way. mostly, we have seen a lot of shoots. We have seen a lot of shoots. We have seen a lot of I have a small bit to do. I double. Right, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> they seem to have asked all the questions that I want to ask. <laughs> anyway, whatever time that we have, we'll quickly have a small casual chat, right? You know, I, of course, I also wasn't advertising you, yes. you know that. So, I used to read this uh, magazine. Uh, it's a bi monthly magazine called Lutzer's Archive. If you, if you remember yeah, yeah, those books, yeah, yeah, you know, there was the editor. Whoever he, he used to invite a lot of, uh, you know, photographers and creative directors for that editorial. It, it used to be a kind of an interview. The first question that he used to ask was, why are you creative? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I actually wanted to ask all photographers, why are you a photographer? Uh, because I was not a good businessman. <laughs> so, I mean, I honestly work well. That's a big lie, yeah? <laughs> He's an amazing businessman too. Uh, there's a lot of things that you need to learn from him. Uh, well, we'll keep it for another day. Anyway, please, sorry. Yeah. So, I, uh, I was uh, inspired by another uh, aspiring photographer during my 10th, 11th, 12th standard. And uh, during the, my 11th and 12th uh, in college, I did some work with some audio visuals for fashion shows and got a chance to bunk college and do <laughs> photography so uh, I would take that chance to go out there and uh, and the pictures that we shot for the fashion show were really appreciated mm -hmm. you know and uh, it was my first experience with a SLR with okay. a SLR camera yeah. and uh, it was a learning experience I shot transparencies for the first time the slides were projected in front of thousands of people who had come for the fashion show and getting appreciation on that level felt really good. Absolutely. You know, and uh, 
so they said you know one of my friends said why don't you really think about doing photography i said i really love it but uh, i'm helping my dad with his business let's see how it goes and this my 12th standard exams were about to come my uh, my board exams and before my 12th exams i went and met sumit chopra who uh, was a photographer and i said sumit you know i uh, really inspired to do photography so he was my brother's friend and he was very honest and he had trained in brooks institute of photography oh, yeah. for 3 years you know yeah. so he told me that uh, you know if you're doing photography don't do it for just meeting people don't do it just think that it's you get away from your studies don't think you get away from the business mm. it's a lot of hard work mm. it's not as glamorous and he gave me the real picture of the whole mm. industry and i said i still want to do it mm. you know so he's saying okay so i said see i can't go abroad like you i can't afford it i was from a middle class family and i said i can't go abroad to do a photography course so can i train with you mm. so he's saying see you're my friends brother and all but i'm not going to treat you like a friend mm. i'm going to treat you like any other assistant mm. you know so i said i'm i'm game mm. my 12th exams got over and next morning the first day of the shoot the call time was at 5 am mm. so i woken up at 3 o'clock and reached the studio at 5 and i was there before 5 o'clock so he was rather impressed that he said okay now i see that you're really interested in it you know and that's where the journey started mm. and watching shoots you know watching uh, the whole uh, what goes into the making yeah. of a photo shoot in those days yeah. you know in it was 1990 yeah. and i i remember still remember the first time i walked into sumit studio i saw these big blow ups and i was being happy with my college pictures and i saw these prints and i had goosebumps mm-hmm. think of it now i'm getting goosebumps yeah, yeah. i walked in and saw these blow ups and i said wow will i ever reach this kind of quality i mean seeing the sharpness this colors and Absolutely. seeing foreign models from brooks which he had shot in america Absolutely. so i said i don't know if this is going to happen but i'll give it my best shot Absolutely. and then i had promised him that i'll work for 3 years i worked for four instead Hmm. you know because i was enjoying it so much it was a great learning experience hmm. and it was not just photography i learned a lot of things including the business including meeting people including production coordinating with makeup hair models the whole works much more than a photography school would have taught absolutely you know do you so remember the first day in sumit studio absolutely yeah? yeah what was it like so it was an outdoor shoot we met at the studio to do makeup and it was a fashion shoot with meher jaisia mm. and uh, we were driving around all of town and it was he was doing a fashion editorial for rain coats for a magazine for mm-hmm. glad rags magazine mm-hmm. and we were doing like with rain coats literally it was actually drizzling you know mm. and we were shooting outdoors mm. i was holding an umbrella and walking with him and assisting him through the whole you know all the shots and those days i remember when he opened the Uh, we were shooting black and white so he had all the different different black and white films and different isos oh. you know so from from 100 to 100 to 400 to, yeah. triax and yeah, you yeah, know those yeah. days 800 and different cameras different cameras yes. different bodies yeah. uh, obviously because we're shooting simultaneously Absolutely. so there's four camera bodies yeah this is something so, uh, the the lots of photographers these say yeah, many yeah, i would say yeah. don't really know of uh, and, and the whole experience and uh, you know Mehr Jaisia was the number one supermodel in those days. You Absolutely. Know, oh, first yeah. day at work, you see her. Yeah. I knew Mehr already. Yeah. Uh, she was also through some common friends. I already knew her. But uh, seeing her work, seeing her shoot, seeing her pose, I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, there was Nutan Shastri, yeah. Mehr Jaisia, yeah. Anu Ahuja, Anu Agarwal. Yeah. Here they were the, you know, stars yeah. those days yeah. in in so, the in the advertising so, yeah. world. So one thing led to the other. I mean, four years, like I learned so much. Mm-hmm. and the whole uh, by by the end of four years i knew okay this is what i want to do mm-hmm. you know i mean and i also did on weekends did my own shoots mm-hmm. and whatever i was learning in the week i used to practice on the weekend mm-hmm. you know so and then uh, photography chose me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would work out wonderful and how yeah. <laughs> and v- When did you really move into the celebrity? You're known as a celebrity so, photographer. Sorry, sorry. Let's move. Okay. Go. We'll catch up. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the problem when you walk into somebody else's set. No. Anyway, let's wait. Dabu had 
planned about three shots on that day and uh, my idea was to go in between and you know get his time and get him to talk a few things on to our camera and now yes we need to wait till he finishes the second one and uh, go in after that So we managed to get some more time with Dabu. I'm going to ask some fundamental questions to him. Fundamental in the sense, well, I saw him using a spider cube. I also saw him using a light meter. He used a different one, but this is the one which I could, uh, you know, manage to get hold of. Uh, this is the uh, Seaconic uh, flash meter. Why? Why? <laughs> uh, so people photographers who and cinematographers who have shot from film days will completely relate to I do <laughs> I am asking a dumb yeah. question but yeah, because yeah. Yeah. you know it's true Ajkal many people don't even know what this is yeah. many photographers don't think it's necessary yeah. but for me it's my main tool I feel that to control my flashlights I always use a flash meter outdoor still you can manage with your built-in meter with the camera but for indoor photography to control each light mm -hmm. I prefer so when I start my process of shooting I put on one light take a reading of that and then I add the second and third fourth and so on so yeah. I know exactly how much power each light is outputting and how much I want to boost it or reduce it mm -hmm. you know so for me the proportions are already worked out worked in your my head, head and, yeah. and honestly when I'm actually doing the shot and I feel uh, I've done my basic proportions and I want to like when I did the proportions and I went back and I took a click and I saw I thought the hair could go a little yeah. bit uh, a yeah. stop more yeah. then I increase it but then I didn't need to take a reading again because in my head I knew the yeah. overall uh, yeah. output that I'm getting yeah. and I feel that uh, I am a photographer who believes very less in post mm. you know so as much as possible jo shoot pe ho sakta hai, I feel you should try and get your raw picture to look amazing so you have less work to do in post and less time to spend on post uh, I, and that will, won't look fake as well if you yeah. try to brighten the legs post may bo zyada kar liya you will be able to tell the difference you know i mean when especially when it's darker and you're trying to enhance it with adding shadow detail it's not as actually adding a light there yeah. you know so yeah. i feel that as much as possible people should try and use the tools that are available Absolutely. and uh, the gray the spider cube i use to check my gray to check my whites my highlights my shadows sure. you know so uh, and this i've been doing since the very beginning yeah. you know so and uh, first i started with a normal gray card Correct. then when i traveled i found the cube Correct. and then uh, spider cube, the yeah. spider cube mm -hmm. and then uh, in fact photo kina was the first place where i saw it mm -hmm. and when i got it down to india people said hey kahan se aaya and mm -hmm. then that was a long time ago which and then it got damaged then uh, this uh, godox people the uh, nikita yeah. people also sent me yeah. another one because then i found out they are distributing it and yeah. i couldn't get my hands on to it yeah. so then i Called Ish and he yeah. se happily sent me two more cubes. He's so, a color man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's a, actually a color yeah, man. Absolutely. So uh, he, I'm, I'm glad that it's finally available in India yeah. and Nikita has brought this to yeah, us. Yeah, they also have the uh, calibrate the entire color calibrating tools. Yeah, yeah. So, next big question. I'm sure this has been asked many, many times to you, is that you've been, you've used the best lights. Uh, I mean, over a period of so many, 26 years, you said. Right. Everything that's available yeah. to light, you've used it. <laughs> right. And now you're a Godox man, a Godox ambassador. Uh, and you use some of the, I mean, here in the shoot, you, I mean, I, I see these paras and I see some of those new power packs there. Yeah. That's a 2400. 2400. So, well, I like to hear from you with regard to its uh, uh, quality, correct? Durability. Yeah, many ease of use. 
because you have lots of other brands to compare from. I don't want you to compare, right. but you know, what's your reason for shifting lock stock barrel to right. Godox? So absolutely right. I now I'm only using Godox mm. and uh, uh, and Ish and the whole Nikita team can vouch for it that until I wasn't satisfied and I had done like a month of testing mm -hmm. with all the lights yeah. is when I decided to actually maybe one or two months they were kind enough to give me all the equipment to I keep. am aware of that and yeah. then when I was absolutely sure is when I made the shift mm -hmm. you know and uh, I was amazed at the quality I was amazed at the speed and uh, I became a fan of their battery, all the AD Pro series, yeah, you know, yeah. AD 600, AD 1200 is my main go-to lights yeah. and 2400 is a very new yeah. addition to my kit. Yeah. So initially my contemplation was should we add some more 1200s or should we get the 2400. So mm. then I saw the recycling speed, I did a workshop in Kolkata recently. You were on almost like on a motor drive in the olden days, you, you went like and top, 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 yeah. top, top, so top, I mean, yeah. uh, then I realized that, you know, I must have one at least yeah. uh, strong power pack with that kind of speed. Mm. I do a lot of hair brands, hair oh. shoots. I do jewelry shoots uh, with models, you know. Mm. So I feel that power can really help me. Mm. And I feel the speed, the recycling speed, especially when you're doing movement shots, hair shots. Yeah. I think that uh, 2400 will really help me to yeah. kind of achieve that, you know. Yeah. So that's when I thought that okay let's get the 2400 and after testing the lights and the kind of innovation in terms of the modifiers that keep coming the para being the latest uh, before that i started with the soft boxes then we got the qr series qrp series yeah. then we got the paras i feel that they are innovating and mm. they are growing at such a fast pace before you think of it they have five new accessories Absolutely. coming you know? I've, so I've seen that. and i like to keep like i earlier said i love to keep up with the latest technology i love to see what's new and, and like i said even one umbrella reflector could change your shot Absolutely. i mean to say you know you can you saw me lighting up the yeah. previous shot yeah. one bounce on the ground and yeah. suddenly that changed the, the whole, whole thing field, you know so yeah. i'm very excited about my equipment i'm very excited about the association with godox because First of all, their support is incredible. I mean, yes. you know, I just have to do one call and uh, I get my backups, I get my servicing, servicing done. done. I mean, whatever you need, it's there. And that's one big thing uh, compared to... Yeah, that's also one point when I was using the other brands. Yeah. Uh, if, if a flash tube went bust, I would have to wait for probably 45 days from when it was shipped from Germany yeah. or from Switzerland, Switzerland you right. know, so... And, and it's so expensive. I mean, you know, like the cost of a flash tube, you can get maybe two lights of Godox. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. finally you have to look at the economic. And if you're getting that great quality. Exactly. With so that economics one, works along with along quality. With the quality. Yeah. If you get that great quality with a fraction of the cost, why mm. not? And and like I said, now it, it's innovating. Now with the uh, power packs which I was using earlier don't, didn't have all the features that are available with these packs are not available with if the monoblocks have more features than my uh, power pack which i was using which was crazy expensive you know mm. so i said that the way technology is moving i think uh, i mean i made the right decision to go with the I, I also personally know your choice of um, whether it be and i know that you are a aut automobile lover you like watches right. you like electronics and every time you pick the best <laughs> now in this case it's it was definitely not the price so it's it's in terms of, so in those product ranges right you need to pay a lot of money to get the best absolutely correct yeah. here in this case it's a little different right. and and have you have gone for something like that right. uh, like godox which is not very expensive but give you great quality absolutely. and you identified that another obvious question yeah fuji <laughs> crop sensor crop sensor because I mean, it's one big myth out there. Right. Um, is is I need a full frame, then moksh, you know. Right. Uh, if I don't have a full frame, you know, I'm not good enough to be a photographer. Here, someone who is at the top of his game is using an XT5, and uh, I saw the pictures on yeah. the large screen, and uh, they were fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, the quality and uh, like I said, you know, the raw files of Fuji are incredible. The highlight shadows, I mean, she was, the model was wearing a white outfit and the highlights were not burning with my... And all the texture also was All visible. the texture, everything was visible yeah. on the outfit and 
to be honest, I mean, it makes absolutely no difference. Mm. I mean, uh, I'd much rather shoot with this, uh, where when I know the pictures are not going to go on a billboard, or pictures are not going to go uh, into uh, posters. Large posters. Large big posters. Size posters. I mean, I'm really, really happy with the XT5. Uh, XH2, I mean, it's got the megapixel, it's got the clarity, it's got the sharpness, it's got the dynamic range. I mean, what else would yeah. you need? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big myth that people want to sell their crop sensors just to buy a full frame, you know, mm. I mean, and they will sell their lenses, they'll sell their kit. Mm. I feel that, you know, there's no point wasting money. My biggest advice would be is, you know, stick to your lenses, keep upgrading your camera bodies, mm. you keep uh, you know, as time goes, I mean, the same lenses I was using on the X-T3, X-T4 and now on the X-T5. Mm. So, you invested in a great quality lens, lens. and, and uh, that's an investment. Absolutely. I keep saying, bodies are expenses, lenses are investments. Yeah. I learned the hard way, but yeah. I mean, that's mm. the best thing to do is, yeah. is, you know, stay with your lenses and don't keep switching brands. I mean, mm. today, uh, you know, stick to your system, stick mm, to exactly. one good system and just keep staying in that ecosystem. Absolutely. Now, this is not to put down the full frame, uh, you know, lovers no. or brands. It's just a discussion just to tell people that, look, someone like him endorses uh, a crop sensor and because he knows uh, what is needed. But same thing, uh, rather with the Fujifilm guys, you know, they gave me two camera bodies for like three, four months yeah. before I actually moved to Fuji. Mm. Until I was not 100% satisfied with the quality, you didn't switch. I didn't switch. Mm. And they were really kind to kind of let me use whatever kit I wanted. Mm. And I, <clears throat> I literally did a test mm. of five different uh, brands, mm. which I, I had those at that point, mm. you know, and I kept all five and did the same shot mm. with five different camera brands mm. and same kind of lenses. And I was, amazed at this quality. Mm. Well, not many people have that luxury, but uh, I want to plug in a small Pixel Village product here. <laughs> the reason is that we've just started a Pixel Village uh, experience center, a oh, multi-brand experience center, wow. where you can actually walk in, take it products. I mean, there are nothing is in the box. Everything is outside, all GFX and the Canons and the Nikons and uh, Panasonics. You take them, shoot with it, see your images, shoot videos, and if you like it, well, we have an option also to sell products to them. Right. But uh, yeah, you can come have a coffee with us, have a chat with us, you know. I'd love to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah, it'll be fantastic, sure. yeah. it'll be fantastic. So, well, this is probably one of its kind Absolutely. in the country. Yeah. Multi-brand photography experience centers where you can come in, make an informed decision without the pressure of buying. Lovely. So, yeah, you're welcome. That'll be fantastic. I'll be there for sure. All right. So, I know that the model has just gone out for the next change. Uh, we will catch him when he is relatively freer. So, we are back in the spotlight <laughs> with Dabu again. Uh, well, he was working from the time he came in here till this moment, he is on his toes, making sure the model is ready, the clothes are ready, the lights are, I mean, of course, that's how, that's how the life of a photographer yeah, is, what, right? That's what we love. <laughs> but 26 years and, and going strong, what really inspires you? What, what keeps you like this all the time? I think just photography itself, I mean, it really is my high. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't need any other high. It really keeps me so fired up that, you know, I want to keep creating new stuff every day. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really, really like, I mean, even the whole Godox team knows any new light comes, it has to first come, come to me here. because, you know, that's how I am. I mean, I like to be the first one to try it out. I want to see give my feedback and that's what that's what my life and you is. And use it in shoots like and, this. Yeah, and yeah. I love it. I love to try new accessories, mm. you know, to be trying this new yeah. So, yeah. Uh, attachment yeah. that they've given us. So, mm. that's what keeps me really uh, buzzing and you know, that's, that's been my motto. I feel that my whole life, anything, uh, every time I'm walk, getting into a shoot, I don't approach it like as if it's I'm bored or I have to go back to work. 
I am excited. I'm driving to the shoot and I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do today? What different am I going to do to, you know, what I've not done with shoots before, what I've not done with a particular artist before. So I think that's what keeps me really excited. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the profession itself that I'm really in love with. You're always on a high. On a, always on a high. <laughs> now, this question might sound like a cliche, uh, but I must ask you. Okay. There are lots, I mean, millions of people follow you both on Insta and also on uh, Facebook. Right. But they see your pictures, but they rarely get a chance to interact with you or listen to you. Right. Unless you uh, decide to go live on a webinar right. or go on stage on a, on a you know, a master class and things like that. But I'm hoping that I will be able to reach you out to a brand, another set of people. Of Absolutely. course, there are overlaps. Right. But uh, if you have to uh, say something to uh, a, a, a youngster want to become a photographer, doesn't matter uh, whether it is commercial, wedding, wildlife, whatever. Right. What would you like to tell him to kind of inspire him and her? Yeah, oh, let it be inclusive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think for <clears throat> my, like I said, my motto is to always be fired up you know choose your genre whatever you want to do and uh, and i think uh, keep looking for inspirations keep looking to keep yourself uh, buzzed you know i mean for me it could be uh, watching movies watch you know watching listening to amazing songs so when you walk into my studio and when the shoot is happening it's literally like a party mm -hmm. you know so and we don't feel manisha works with me we don't feel that it's a job. It's this one was. Yeah, you know, we, so I, I tasted a little bit of yeah, that. Yeah, you know, so uh, your then too the music is soft and you know because <laughs> we're recording video and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. otherwise, literally, we treat work like party. You know, it's mm -hmm. like an extension. My kids are over at the studio. My dog comes. I mean, it's literally like home. It's an extension. So I don't feel like uh, I'm going to work. I honestly feel that it's just my personality. It is what I do, what I love. And for all the people out there, you know, I mean, they should do photography for the right reasons. Some people want to do it, hey, you make a lot of money, I want to do photography. That's the wrong reason. You have to have the right reasons of, you know, the craft, the art, what you want to do in photography. You have to, see, today you're going to get work only if you create a niche for yourself. If you do just replicate or you just copy someone else's work, they'll still go back to the original. You may do one, two shoots, but you will not sustain in the business. Yeah, unless you grow, take it as an inspiration. You have to, and then. Yeah, you have to evolve, you have to stay updated with fashion, with equipment, with lights, with technology. I mean, you know, it's like a non-stop thing. Yeah, it means it's... And, even for you, you don't take it like as if it's a job. I mean, it's like you love enjoying to do it. it. You yes. enjoy it. I think if you keep enjoying what you're doing, you'll always do well. And and, and don't worry about, you know, there always will be competition. There will be undercutting. There's All that is a part in any profession. Yeah. You know, so you shouldn't get worried and can't shouldn't get bothered with that. I mean, it's going to happen. Maybe for a day you may feel, oh, why you lost that shoot? But you need to move on and, you know, Absolutely. get on to the next one. So Absolutely. there will be ups and downs like any profession, but you shouldn't take take it uh, badly. Yeah. Take it in your stride and keep moving on and keep pushing yourself. Do better, keep evolving. Yeah, That's the way to go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that question, <laughs> what I want to sum up here is another cliche, uh, which, is, which basically says if you uh, do a job which you really love, you will not work a single day of your Absolutely, life. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, so wonderful. Said, yeah. Thank you very much, Thank you, uh, Debu. It was lovely. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, the time given to Pixel Village. Thank you uh, so Looking much. forward to meeting you in Pune. For sure. <laughs> Thank you. So we have a say we have a typical way of signing off in Pixel Village. Hmm. Bye for now. Yes. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I think it was a day well spent. Okay, traveling about 150 kilometers into the middle of Mumbai on a working day morning and uh, spending a whole day waiting for the celebrity photographer to, you know, uh, get free and catch his time. And, you know, it was all worth it. Let me tell you, even after so many years of uh, working as a commercial photographer, 
I don't miss an opportunity to talk to experienced professionals, especially someone like him, who's been working along with the most demanding celebrities of the country, uh, both on screen and off screen, and every time get these great images out of them. There are lots of takeaways from that conversation, okay? Uh, definitely for me, and I'm sure lots of uh, upcoming photographers who aspire uh, to be like Dabu Ratnani, uh, or somebody wants to definitely make a mark on a commercial professional scene, has to definitely, you know, heed to those words that he was talking about. If you noticed, he was still now, I mean, he's been around for what? Quarter century, so to speak, 26 plus years. He was still taking flash meter readings, okay? So sometimes he was using a continuous light, but he was still reading and he was doing it himself, okay? He didn't get an assistant to go there and take the reading, one. Second, he kept on talking about discipline, timing, uh, and uh, going through that extra mile to be with a master who will teach you. Uh, so these are traits, ask me, I'll tell you, these are traits that uh, you don't really find in many uh, youngsters and I want to caution them uh, because there are no shortcuts, okay? You will learn a lot of uh, theory, you will refer a lot of pictures, you will find out how somebody did a certain shot in a certain way, but nothing can substitute the experience that you will have under or in the studio or under that master. Okay, so if you are lucky, you will find a master like him and you should be ready to do the work. I mean, go that extra mile and work and whatever that needs to be done in that studio to make that shoot a success, you should be a part of it. Well, it's my personal experience again now as a content creator in New Avatar. People saying, no, that's not my job, I don't do it. Or um, you pass that instruction to somebody who apparently is junior to you and say, okay, now you go and get it done and things like that. There is nothing, there are no shortcuts, like I said. He is a true example of someone even now follows that good old fashioned disciplined ways of shooting and no wonder why he is still at the top of the game. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did doing this video, okay? Uh, well, I want to really continue this kind of videos at Pixel Village. I want to talk to senior photographers who are really experienced, may not be as popular as him, but has tons of experience. But I want to bring the entire cross-section of photographers who have done that and have these, you know, decades of experience under their belt. And I would like to bring them on to the screen and talk to you. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And of course, Keep watching Pixel Village.